I'd like to welcome everyone to the Planning Board Workshop for the 24th of February. Thanks for all for being here. We all know each other, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. One thing I realized we didn't do officially last time, we talked about setting the public hearing date for March 18th. Um, but we actually haven't officially voted on that or set a time, so I, I thought maybe we could start with that. We can do that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Perfect. This is a public hearing date for? For the zoning amendments. Oh, okay. um, it will be pending, obviously, the selectmen submitting them back to the planning board for. Will you need this in the form of a motion? Um, I think it would be good to, to do that. I move we set the uh, hearing date for any review of any. Uh, bylaw amendment submitted by the selectmen yeah. for March 18th at uh, yeah. a particular time. Uh, actually, when we have that night? Do we have 645? Uh, is that the combined golf course again? No, that's the fourth. Okay. Uh, March well, 18th is a continuation of Newbury Self Storage at 715. So, do you want to do 645? 
and then if there are any comments, I can certainly pass them back to, to, to David. But I know you've got a markup. I don't know if, if you had <laughs> thoughts. Yeah, or... yeah, I do. If you I just want to be sure I understand what's being proposed properly. Um, so basically, um, Martha, this regulates uh, wireless communication facilities, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Which basically, if I understand correctly, is any, for lack of a better term, transmitting facility, um, whether it's on a tower or in a church steeple or you know some other location, but the towers themselves are only allowed in certain districts. That's what he's proposing. Okay. What is a little bit unclear to me from this is uh, is the, um, the special permit, does it apply to all facilities or just facilities located on towers? Um, that was actually something that I had a question about as well, um, sort of generically, because I, I did my own markup here and I can hand it out. It's just got a few comments, but if you've got your working copies. My comments are in pink. <laughs> And basically, he, um, my understanding is that his suggestion was to move this out of the um, overlay district, um, but it would require a special permit for any wireless communications okay. facilities. Mm -hmm. And he's suggesting a cha go change from being the zoning board to the planning board. Okay. And, the, and what about site plan? Because that's mentioned several times site plan review. Yeah, and I, I noticed that as well. So I don't know, you know, if the thought is that essentially if you're asking for a special permit, there is a site plan review component to it as opposed to a special, you know, separate site plan. And so we'd have to have two separate hearings or, or well, simultaneously. Unless the, unless the criteria are written, written as such, like the, the um, where you go solo, the special permit is just a special permit. Um, right. There's no site plan, separate site plan that you need it. What's your concern, Mark? I was just confused. Okay. You know, I mean, look, if you look at, and this may actually be in our original bylaw, if you look on the fifth page, um, and there's the middle requirements, I know those pages aren't numbered. Uh, as part of any application for special permit, applicants shall submit at a minimum the information required for site plan approval. As set forth therein. Well, is it a special plan or is it site plan approval? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I didn't, my, I, my I, I do have some confusion over uh, to the extent that site plan approval is required. I, my belief or understanding was that uh, any facility, whether in the, whether on a tower or not, that the intent was to be subject to special permit. Yes. Yeah. But I, I wasn't comfortable that that was really spelled out very clearly. Yeah. Um, that said, it may become clear just looking at a clean copy of what's being proposed. Yeah. You know, sometimes the, the notes can be, you know become confusing. Um, so I, I wouldn't propose any amendments at this point, but I think it's just something we ought to think about going forward. Yeah, no, I noticed that as well. Um, one thing that may be the genesis of that is that the original bylaw was written before we had site plan approval or site plan review bylaw. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it may have been intended to be sort of generic as opposed to Oh, I see. No specific yeah. requirement. I mean, I'm not taking a position on anything mm -hmm. one way or the other. I just yeah. think it might need some clarification. Yeah. You know. But other than that, I mean, and, and that again, I think that's something that needs to be um, worked out through time. I did pick up on a few typos. If you want to look at those. Yeah. I saw one too. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, so we're going to do the fourth page regarding uh, noise. Um, um, generation? Yeah, there's, there's talk about generators. I assume that those are just backup generators, like these facilities don't have their own generators. Is that 
No, the, they're, they're required to have backup generators. As a backup, right. Oh, it's not so that's where the noise comes in? Right. Right. It's not something that's going to be running constantly. Uh, we looked at the submittal requirements. Oh, and on the sixth page, um, this is just a minor point. Um, oh, yeah, um, I'm sorry. The fifth and sixth page is a provision regarding uh, the um, uh, a, a plan in, a, in a, an appropriate scale to be determined by the planning board. I guess that means we need to adopt a regulation or something on that. Uh, yes. Yeah, or have something in the submittal. Yeah, regulation which would have submittal requirements. Which, which maybe is better than having it set in stone and in the zone. Yeah, and that's actually one of the things that Lisa talked about this morning. In Burlington, they had, um, I think they had a zoning bylaw, a general bylaw, and then regulations all pertaining to wireless. So that the regulations allow them to make some of those changes without having to go through the town meeting process, you know, sort of the administrative kinds of, of things. So that makes sense. So, um, I think that's that's one of the, the reasons she was suggesting that we maybe hold hold off here so that we can really work through. Just do it right. Do it right. It, get it right. Uh, on that same page, uh, the uh, paragraph F in red the, begins the app and shall be required. Towards the very end there, it says balloon test may be necessary for attachments, in which case the D may, I think the word applicant is yes, inserted yeah, there. Yeah. So. What else? Oh, and from page nine going forward, uh, this continued reference to the ZBA that I think should be. Yeah, that point. was that was one of the things that I noted. Um, yeah, for each of those, I put in planning board question mark. Um, so I think he probably just hadn't gone through. Yeah, he didn't fix that. Yeah, there, there are several yeah. I saw that yeah. from that point forward. Yeah, I've got at least three of them. Yeah, is it? And lastly, on the second to the last page, there's reference to eligible facilities request. I, I'm, I'm gathering an eligible facility is something that's defined in the federal regulations. It is, and that was actually the modification that we made last year um, to add this language to the bylaw because there was no provision for eligible facilities um, to, um, you know, for somebody to change out a tower or do anything without going through the whole special permit process and, uh, all and over again. Am I correct then that there must be something in federal regulations that allow for streamlining? Yes. Um, uh, yeah. 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 yeah, so that, that, that was the intention here. <clears throat> we, we basically had to follow that lead, which we needed to catch up on. Right, right. so Rachel actually led the charge on, on that, and this language, as written, did get approved last year, but obviously <clears throat> needs to be updated a little bit more. Can I ask a stupid question? No question is stupid. Thank yes. you very much. <laughs> um, Back to the noise. Yep. Is that this isn't applying? <coughs> I probably read this wrong, but this isn't applying to putting it up. This is applying to after it's installed. Right. right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I, I wrote that as a note because I wasn't sure. Yeah. And then I, the only other thing notes I had were either errors that he caught or um, where in the, the last final last page or two where they did correct. Change the plan board. Yeah. And then I think I have one more note here, but I don't know where it is, so I'll speak up again if I find it. Okay. And I had a few, as I said, there noted in, in pink here. But yeah. you know, if this should should be taken out of the overlay district uh, section of the, the zoning bylaw and put into Article Five special permits. Um, Well, right, right now, the overlay district consists of what? Just but, the business and light industrial district. Do we even need to call it an overlay then? Couldn't we just put it as a permitted use subject to special permit? I, I guess six one half of this. Right. I guess the only, the one thing that we've talked about is, is potentially adding some other sites in town to to an overlay so, district or a wireless communications district, whatever you so want to call that, it. In that case, the overlay district would make 
more would sense. Make, would make yeah. more sense, but he has suggested that we take it out of the overlay district because right right now his concern is that because we've identified this as a wireless communications overlay district, there may be some carriers who would come in and contend that anything that's not within that district um, isn't subject to the special permit requirements here. So um, that was one of my questions, actually. On the third page between uh, seven and eight, all of a sudden he's got general use restrictions, but the numbering following it hasn't changed. So it seems to me like there should be a whole new section here that would pertain to general use restrictions. General, yeah. Yeah, that's where, for me, a lot of the confusion started yeah. right there yeah. as to what is subject to what regulation. Yeah, no, it did, it did me as well. So um, I think I think we need clarification on that. I think all the way up to that point, he's been talking about towers versus facilities. He's made that change, but it seems like this is this time it just it needs to change. So. Yeah. Yeah, it goes back to communications. Facilities. Maybe, maybe there needs to be a section for towers mm -hmm. in, or facilities okay. located on towers, and then a section for facilities not located on towers. Right. And even if it's somewhat redundant, even if you Kind of cutting and pasting at some of the same provisions, at least it might be clear and easy to understand. Right, right. Or we may be able to deal with it um, perhaps similar to the way we dealt with accessory apartments, um, as we had some general provisions that apply to ones that are attached and ones that are detached, and then specific ones for detached. But. Um, but I think definitely it needs to be clarified here. I had suggested actually on the first page maybe there should be some language under purpose that really makes it clear what you just said. Just an open view of what it is yeah. we're trying to regulate and how we're trying to regulate right. it. Right, right. Yeah. That, that should, you know, that type of approach should resolve any uncertainty. And it might also help. Our, our bylaw, our zoning bylaw is a little bit schizophrenic and, and in the way it handles definitions. Some of the specific bylaws have definitions related to them in the bylaw, but some of them are actually like, I think solar may have them in the bylaw, but wind actually has them in the general bylaw or definitions at the end. So I think it's kind of helpful to have specific ones in the bylaw itself. And if we had them up front, that might also help clarify some of this stuff. So you made a definition a section. A definition section, yeah. That's at the end of this thing, yeah? Um, highlighted the definitions. I mean, he's, he's put a note there saying that definitions are still needed. Um, but yeah, I think there needs to be more clarification. I had another question. Uh, I guess it would be page 9876. Where it's, he's got a cross out here, shall limit the duration of a special permit to three years. That's crossed out, so what is the limit or duration of a special permit? I think it would be as long as the facility is, is up, and, up, running, up the, and running. The permit's open. Special permit's open, you said. Otherwise, they would have to reapply for a special right. permit. things that I had. So on the second page, there's a paragraph 07, which is underneath um, kind of criteria, um, or the criteria for making a determination, but it has to do with fencing. So it seemed like that should really more appropriately go under conditions, as opposed to criteria.
make sense? Yes, it does. Yep. Yeah, it's not really a cartoon. Yeah. And then on that same page on all four, if I'm reading this correct, are they saying there's no, the highest point of any tower would be no more than 65 feet above ground? Yes, uh, or that height which is necessary to clear the surrounding vegetation. So I guess that could be either higher or lower. It's kind of, that's kind of open, right? It's a little open. Yeah. I don't know how you fix that, but, but he was talking about 120 foot towers too. So. He was, he was talking about much, much higher now. I was talking about a telephone pole plus 50 foot at one point. Right. Was, that was, yeah. So I kind of didn't understand boat number four in that sense of just limiting it to 65 feet. Well, the way I've interpreted it is it's limited to 65 feet unless the board makes a finding that it's necessary to clear the surrounding vegetation. I guess I read that wrong because I was reading that as it, they could only be 65 feet. Well, that's kind of, I think, the default. Uh, unless there's a showing that, that needs to be told. Yeah, the need for the height and lack of less impactful alternative, or whatever the language goes. Right. But there has to be a finding by, by it doesn't say by the planning board, but that's implied finding that the applicant has made a substantial showing of the need for the height and the lack of less impactful alternatives, whichever is greater, which I guess refers back to the 65 feet or greater. Right, 65 feet above ground or that height, which is necessary. Right. Yeah. I think that's what he's intending there. Yeah, but it is a little unclear. But if, yeah, well that's, you know, that type of language can be clarified. Yeah. Uh, let's see, going on, just a, maybe a typo on the fifth page, I guess, the top. Um, seems like in front of the word conflict, there should be an and or an or in front of that. I don't see it with all conflict. So such facilities will employ best practices to design a facility that does not appear visually objectionable, produce visual blight, obscure scenic or safety. It looks like a board. Yeah. Or, conflict or conflict with that character yeah. of its surroundings. Of course, we're getting into subjective criteria here, which are a little difficult. Um, um, the next page, sort of halfway down, I think it seems that there's a photo simulation report from balloon crane test, including report methodology, existing simulator, and map of photo locations. That's an incomplete sentence. I'm sorry, you're right. That's right. It's the um, halfway through paragraph F. It says a photo simulation report from a balloon crane test, including report methodology, etc. That's an incomplete sentence, I think. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, it just it's keeps going. Shall be. Should be. Shall. Be. Shall include, yes, okay. <coughs> Two. Z. 
CBA instead of right now. instead of um, just several references to yeah. the ZBA and Student Planning Board. And then at the very end, um, under exemption, I wasn't quite sure what his intention was here. It says the following type of wireless communications towers are exempt from the zoning bylaw. Amateur radio towers used in accordance, blah, blah, blah. And he says there is state and federal law requiring the minimum practicable regulation of amateur radio towers. This does not eliminate regulating these in residential areas to the extent necessary. So I'm not it's quite sure how we should, if what his intention is then in, in terms of how we deal with this. Yes. Whether it should be regulated elsewhere. Well, isn't that what he's kind of saying? Is there's already FCCs for like the ham radio guys with the home towers that you see in people's yards? That's the way I interpreted it. What I thought he was doing was sort of deferring to federal regulation, but I hadn't really appreciated the balloon that Mark was talking about here because it does seem to run, suggest that, that we ought to have something. Something. Yeah, right. and I don't know what that something is. In your back here, 65 feet. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'll just, I flagged it as a question for him. So we'll see what he comes back with. So I did send him a copy of my markup on Friday um, and can send him our comments from today just as additional um, stuff and see what he comes back with. But I guess the question for the board is, you know, with these questions and the time frame that we're dealing with, um, you know, do you feel comfortable moving forward, or do you feel that it would be best to kind of give more time to find? Yeah, I don't think this is going to be ready for the spring uh, meeting. I mean, we're going to have to take it up at our meeting on the 18th if if it's being referred back from the select member. Just there's no reason why we can't recommend those numbers. Right. You know. But yeah, especially if, if town council's uh, not comfortable with it. And we still have some answers, some questions that we yeah. have some answers. So right. I think, considering the time frame, it's probably best. We want to get it to the, to the meeting, but I don't think we're going to make it. Right. Yeah. So I guess, I guess after the 18th, if everybody still feels that way, then the recommendation could be to the selectmen not to include it on the warrant. I mean, well, before the 18th, what I would love to have is have you get his comments back as a clean copy. Clean, yes, yeah. You know, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's 95% there, you know. Um, you know. We hired this guy for his expertise, and, and uh, I, I think it's, we're looking at it with more layman's eyes, and we may, you know, see some confusion where he sees clarity. So, so today's the 24th? Yeah. We, we, we bring it back on our meeting? On the 4th? Yeah. Um, and by then, it will have been, then it's maybe a question for you. Um, so the hearing will have been posted. Can we talk about it still outside of the public hearing, or should we then wait until the 18th? I mean. Yes, maybe. It depends if we've heard back from the selectmen. You know. Um, I don't see, and unless we really want to make a concerted effort to get this on for the Springtown meeting, I don't see where having it on for the fourth is going to help okay. us. Okay. You know. Tuesday, I could say to the selectmen that that uh, you know, it seems like there's more process, and, and perhaps it would be best to hold off on it and not even put it on for the public hearing on the 18th. Whatever, you know. So whatever you guys feel comfortable with. I mean, if I, we're going to hold it off until the spring, you know, until the fall meeting to put this on, if we start. Like a public meeting now, 
most of that information being forgotten by the time? Well, there are also time frames. Um, the public hearing, you know, if we were to hold a public hearing now, then town meeting has to um, has to be within six months of the planning board public hearing, and depending on when town meeting is scheduled for, it may, may be outside of that six months. If, if we if we went to shoot for the spring <coughs> for the annual meeting, what's the absolute deadline we would have to have a final version to this like one? Um, they're going to be voting on and signing the warrant on March 31st. The other, it would be a very quick public hearing. It would be one, one hearing with. Yeah, it has to be. All deliberation questions answered, and everybody comfortable with that. Well, if we want to keep our options open, I think we probably have to keep the 18th for public hearing. Right? Okay. Uh, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. And and we don't necessarily have to re send it back to the select them with a recommendation for approval. Okay. All right, then let's see if we can get uh, get responses back from our consultants. See what that looks like. We can let the select know that we're working on it. Hopefully, we'll get this to the finish line for their end of the month. At, at least keep the option open. Yeah. Yeah. And if it gets there. If not, then mm -hmm. it will also keep us working on it, too. I have one more question, and then I won't ask any more. <laughs> on, on the very first page, in his notes, it says here, About adding, adding zoning to areas where it isn't um, a substantial part of town that's overlooked. Who identifies where we need where we would need potential zoning um, changes? I guess is what I'm asking. Well, I think you know, his suggestion was to see if we can identify certain locations or parcels in town that might be appropriate based on the coverage studies that they've done so far. So it would be based off his map? So it would be based off the map, and we had talked about Triton as being you know, potentially a good location to cover, you know, sort of a central area that's not covered now. I think the, the tougher one is over on the east side of town, um, as they had previously looked at the DPW site, but that's a very, it's a small site, it would be difficult. No. But I think that that could, depending on when this moves forward, that could be a second stage. So right now we would keep the district as the business and light industrial district and then work to identify some other parcels. So that, that, would, be, that would be for this meeting? I don't think we can. And I think we really want to probably get some you know, stakeholder input in that, whether it would involve, you know, some, some additional meetings outside the public hearing or, you know, certainly conversations. Because we can't, I guess my question too was, we can't identify until we really analyze his final map. I mean, we know there's all gap over there, but that's all, what is that area of high road? That's all uh, near the highway bond. That's all residential, right? It's all Ag agricultural residential, residential and, yeah. I mean, would it, who, who job is that to add zoning over there for this? If we, someone was to want to put a tower over there. Well, that would be, up to up to the board. Uh, this board. Yeah. So what would happen would be, um, you know, if there are some parcels that are agreed to, and a landowner is comfortable, then that would get added to the you know, description of, of the wireless communications district. Okay. But that would also be a zoning change that I would have to go for town meeting as well. Yeah, I just didn't understand. Um, 
I guess you answered most of my misunderstanding, but I just wasn't sure how you changed the zoning in that area. Yeah, That's so what I'm be, yeah, so it wouldn't be a change of the underlying zoning. It would be more like the wireless communications district right now is an overlay. So the underlying zoning still pertains to the business and light industrial. So residential agricultural would still be the underlying zoning there. Zoning in that area. Right, okay. but certain parcels could become part of the wireless communications district. So you just expand the overlay district. Right, right, yeah. right. That just, I, I said much more that's my lack of... <laughs> It's my lack of knowledge shining through, so. Most of the questions. No, I kind of understand. It's okay. So that's why we're having this this week. That's that's all my markers I had. So. All right, that was all I had. Les, did you have anything? <coughs> Excuse me. No, I do not. Yeah, I think if I could get a clean copy of this would be really helpful. I was going to try to do one, and then I thought his all of his comments and the deletions right now are so germane. I didn't want to just kind of no, get rid of all of it. But, but I think <coughs> what's going to happen too is once you get rid of all the deletions, the um, uh, the section numbers are going to change. They yes. might look, they might make more sense. Right. They might, you know. They might. He also had a fair amount of language that was deleted um, that didn't seem to be replaced with anything having to do with yeah so um, I want to see how he addresses that as well in sort of the next iteration of this Another part where something about a bond for removal, yeah. it falls under the, um, it'll fall under the owner of the property as opposed to having a bond for removal of the tower down the road. I forget where I saw that. Yeah, no, I remember, I remember that was seeing little, that. That was a little confusing to me, but. I don't remember where I saw it. Yeah, he, he said, uh, I was going to remember what it was, he said it was not yep. necessary for... That was some of the crossed out language. Oh, did it, did it have to do with the fact that under the old version it was only, the special permit was only good for three years? <coughs> and that where this is not limited in time, you see the need for the bond? Yeah, I remember, I remember seeing that, but I don't, I don't yeah, well, I woke up and off now I'm looking for it, but I can't find it. Uh, it was in, um, basically, the bottom of the last, second to last page over onto the top. So there's a plan about how this site will be returned to its pre-existing conditions and then a bond to be held by the town, the amount of which will be determined by the ZBA. And his comment was that this seemed unnecessarily burdensome. And removal bonds have to be tracked on town and permittee. Oh, for good. Yeah, treat this like any other property development, the owner is liable. So that just, that's by him admitting all that or taking all that out, we're leaving the liability or removal on the, owner. On the, on the property. Owner. Yeah. So if it were a town owned property, then, then. It would be us, it would be the town owner. We're the tower owner, actually. Well, that would be up to, I mean, if, if the tower owner was leasing property from the town, that would be part of the negotiation right. with right. the lease for the lease. Right. Because by admitting that, we're, we're not leaving that open for confusion down the road, right? When, I, when 
they have to be removed or the damaged? And he doesn't seem to feel so, but I could certainly ask him for clarification. Yeah, I think he's just relying on his, his experience and saying he just doesn't see it as a necessary. Okay. Yeah. says that if it, something about them not being used for a year, right? Is a year appropriate? I guess that's a question. Because, I mean, let's just say a tower's up and there's a vendor, you know, that is sublet leasing, subleasing, and one of the subleases backs out or, or something like that, and then they go into negotiation, basically the facility is not in use. That's essentially commercial operation of the year. The year's not much time to negotiate stuff. I could see, like, maybe three years, then the requiring decommissioning. But one year doesn't seem like Where's that one year? It's uh, under number eight, uh, liability uh, insurance slash removal of the bond. So it's kind of on that last, almost the second of the last page there, at the bottom. A wireless communication number 8B, a wireless communication tower facility is not substantially, so you have to define substantially in commercial operation for a period of one year, it shall be removed. So I guess there are, there are two, two, two quick questions. What is substantially, how do you define that in commercial operation? It shall be removed. One year is not a long time. No, not really one year. I mean, something, you know, somebody's. Well, there aren't that many operators. I, I would say the, the, the marketplace is pretty much defined as to who's aware. But I guess things could change. Well, if, there was, if for some reason technology advanced and everyone was connected via satellite. Yeah, maybe, but maybe, to your point, Pete, maybe there ought to be, if not an expansion of the one year limit. Mm -hmm. Uh, some provision in there where they could come before the board and ask for an extension. Because yeah. they're not yeah, much. Yeah, that, that, you, 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 yeah. Can, you can see some yeah. <coughs> unintended consequences there. Yeah. 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 Contract negotiations, they go sideways somehow. Right. And how do you define commercial use? Yeah. If, you, if it's up and you're maintaining it, does it mean you have to be broadcasting? You know, or. or Substantial. Yeah. Yes. Then you go right back to the language of that's crossed out is the bond, bond, bond. So 
pin for it, I guess. Which would fall back on the owner of the leasee. <coughs> the person leasing it. To your point, the third to last page you know, again talks about the permit application, special permit, signs, and exterior lighting, and site plan approval. Yeah, I just think it just needs to be clarified. Right. Accept the application and the 
um, like in the clerk's office. At the time that it's submitted. At the time that it's submitted there. And our regs call for all of these things to be filed formally at a planning board meeting. Mm -hmm. So so for us, it would actually be like a month after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, maybe we can re review the rights. And again, I don't want to rush into anything here, but just something to think about. The other uh, last two documents in the packet um, are just examples of it. We it probably would, in addition to publishing the schedule, be appropriate to have some sort of written policy that you have there um, what our Board of Selectmen have on their website. And it's very simple and straightforward, as you can see. Uh, it doesn't necessarily meet our requirements. And the last one is something I put together, and it would need some work, but I just pulled it pulled this uh, and adapted it from the handover Board of Selectmen's agenda policy. Um, and I think it, it just, um, I think it's something that we might find useful. So let's read this language here. So in preparation of agenda for board meetings, the agenda for a meeting will be prepared by the town planner after conferring with the chair and or other members of the board. The agenda will close at a determined time, p.m., and a determined day before the regular bi-monthly meeting of the planning board on a determined day of another meeting, excluding Saturdays, Sundays, and legal holidays. And no changes to the agenda shall take place thereafter except as follows. Any matter coming to the attention of the town plan or member of the board after the above stated closing time and considered to be an emergency matter may be included on the agenda. The chair will be notified of any such changes. Consideration of matters of non-emergency nature may be allowed at the discretion of the chair if permitted by the open meeting law, but may be tabled until the next regular meeting. Well, this is just an example. I'm not necessarily married to any of this language, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, it's just a way to uh, to um, approach it. And what got me thinking about this, frankly, was the Borrego thing when they had to come in for permission to, uh, what was it? To do the access road. To do the access road. Yeah. And the bridge. Yeah. Um, and there was some, at, at the time I had a concern about it, but Martha explained to me the extenuating circumstances, so I was comfortable with it, but it got me thinking that, you know, maybe it would be helpful to have something in place. Mm -hmm. um, so, that's it. Uh, no, I'd suggest you give it some thought. Well, well let's, let's chew, chew on this a little bit, because I think this is, this is very important. Um, so, folks in the area understand there are policies in other communities, contiguous communities, that are pretty well defined, that you have to have this by a certain amount of time, otherwise don't submit it. So they're accepted practices. I think we, do you know where I'm going with this? I, I do. Um, you know, we, we deal with things or handle things a little bit differently based on our rules and regs. So for a site plan review example, the rules and regs very specifically say that I need to get a draft copy and review it and determine that it's complete before it gets submitted to the board. Um, and I think in, in, in these cases, an application gets submitted to the town, say the town clerk, public hearing gets set, and it's not necessarily reviewed ahead of time to make sure that it's complete by the time the public, I mean, hopefully it is. Um, but it's just a little different, so I think that's, that's where I kind of get caught, because we'll know that something's gonna be on the agenda. I know that somebody wants to submit something on X date, and in the past, what I've done is I'll say, I need to have it no later than the Wednesday before the scheduled public hearing where you want to submit it so that I can review it and get comments back to you. And then that doesn't happen, or the comments come in late, so then you guys are getting the materials late. And um, So let's, let's, let's talk about what would be an appropriate, reasonable amount of time for that situation to be handled. So, you know, if you want to have your material on such and such a date, 
we have to give you enough time to digest it, to present it to us. So is that time two weeks? Is that time four weeks? You know, most people when they're doing things, they think about it for a while before they get it to us. And these plans just don't fall out of the sky. They've been on an engineer's desk for a while, an architect's desk, where they've been processed. No, sometimes they fall out of the sky. Well, you know, they do a last they they do a last minute hustle to get something to us because yeah. they're trying to meet a deadline, yeah. an internal deadline right. that they have. Yeah, but you know, the week is not enough. It's just not enough with, with what you have on your plate and how everything goes on and then we have an illness or we have weather or something else happens. It's just, it's, a week is not enough time. Especially since, since Friday, so I, I think the town hall is closed. So we're talking it doesn't about, mean it's empty. <laughs> but, no. So we're talking about a four-day a four you know, work period. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot in, in that. So what do we think is reasonable? Well, let me back that question up a little bit. Yeah. In order for you guys to have an appropriate time to review things that are coming in, when would you like to have it? At least a week beforehand. Yeah. At least a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, absent a truly compelling or emergency situation. Yeah, I think so. I don't think that's unreasonable. Yeah. I mean, would ideally two weeks be great? It might be because if there's anything that we need to know or tweak before and we're all gathered, it, you know, it doesn't have to have meaningful discussion, but it can be brought up and we're all together and we all get it at the same time. So that means but three weeks. Too difficult? I think that would be tough. Yeah. Um, Not for you. We're talking about for the applicant. Yeah, no. I, I, yeah. So we're doing applicant consideration. Well, I, I think I think most of the professionals in the area know what they can get away with and what they can't, and trying to give you some some authority to say sorry, but you know this right. is that this is this is it. And it, it seems to be it. Uh, and I'm not just seeing it here. I'm seeing it with the ZBA two yeah. people coming in at the last minute. Mm -hmm. You know, filing amendments to their plans the date of the hearing. You know, and. Um, it's tough. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, and what it means for them ultimately is that it's going to have to be continued because the board hasn't had a chance to review it and, and digest it. And that's one of the things that I keep trying to stress with the applicants. You know, they'll try to hurry up and get an, an application in. And, you know, my mantra is that if you don't, if it's not reviewed and it's not complete, that's just going to cost you more time and more money, you know, at the other end. Like the Charing Cross, I think is a perfect example of that. The what? We had a subdivision application before us that they, they tried to submit something that was woefully incomplete. Um, it got to kind of an acceptable stage, but they never provided the board with the information that they needed, and it was continued like four times. So we never had the information that we should have had pretty much from the start. From the start. From the start. But it, it occupied our time, occupied our space. We had to have discussions, you know. Repeat offender. Just never got the work done. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. They they just couldn't get their act together, basically. So, but and if you were, and the the agenda itself doesn't need to be posted until forty eight hours before. Um, so um, I'm looking at, you know, new report meets every two weeks. Right? Maybe twice a month. Yep. Um, and so I think they, I don't know if they have an internal review before it's submitted to the board. I don't think they do. I mean, when I was doing projects there, I would just go in and get it stamped mm -hmm. by the town clerk and then hand it in at the planning office. So it was uh, a different, different process. But this would give you a week or longer to get it reviewed to then get to us if we wanted at least a week. I mean, the contiguous community has a very similar, mm -hmm. you know, schedule to ours. It allows all the information or the information to be submitted and then reviewed yeah. in a timely manner. 
mean, my whole goal here was to make your life easier, Martha. Understood. But I think um, it's important also for it to be easier for you as well. Well, by extension, if your life was easier, our life was easier. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Yes. We'll get it. Yeah, we'll, we'll just... Uh, yeah. In a much more timely yeah. manner than we have time to, to, to look at it, think about it. Wait to the last minute to look at it. That was humor. But again, these are pertaining to public hearings. Right. So it's a little different understand. than ordinary agenda items. Yeah. understand. Well, that's why we might need something in addition to that, the written policy. So do we want to define, do we want to, do we want to separate matters that are going to require, you know, public a hearing. public hearing or, you know, a special, uh, right, a special permit? Uh, they, they, they need to have a well, actually, threshold. No, I'd say that uh, newer put sort of does this. Preliminary subdivisions A and R is one week. Um, and uh, you, could, you could add to that all other business not requiring a, uh, a public hearing or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be one week, it can be two, but the point is you can make that, draw that distinction between things that require public hearings and, and those that don't. Create a filter. Fine. Yes. Yeah. But, but I think for this, I mean, what they would need to understand is if they were coming in with a special, say, a special permit application or a site plan review or a subdivision, if they're submitting it, we can't. If they're submitting it for review, if they're submitting a draft for review, um, say on December 18th, it would be formally submitted, and filed with the board on the 15th, but then the public hearing would be a month after that. So, can we back into that somehow? So. I was well, you know, it's rather unusual. Um, most communities, in my experience, you file with the town clerk, you know. Um, and uh, I, I believe the statute says either or, if I'm not mistaken. I, it, it does. Um, and I know communities are moving away from our process, and a lot of the engineers seem to be kind of surprised that we're still doing it the way we're doing it. Yeah. I think it, it, it benefits the process. Um, well, what's your thought but, on that? Does it benefit the process? No, I think it does. I mean, certainly the, um, I mean, A&Rs are a little different, but the engineers, and, and they're not required to submit, a, to submit a draft of an A&R to me at all, but the engineers that have gone through the process says, have said that it really helps. And if you guys were to get an A&R call, say, um, if it were filed in a meeting, um, you have 21 days within which to endorse it. And because it's been reviewed ahead of time, usually we're able to endorse the same night. So it helps helps them. Okay. So in helping them, the applicant, we have to figure we have to figure out an equation that it works for you and it works for us. Right. But if we were to continue with the same process that we've been doing, it could be reasonable, I think, to get a draft application two weeks prior to the meeting at which it was going to be filed. And then other things could be a week before. If we were to change the regulations to eliminate the preliminary review, then you know, it doesn't really matter. Then we could adopt something like this. So that puts us on the 21 day clock. Well, that, that would just be for the A and R's, yeah. you know, for anything else if they... So how, okay, let's, let's play that out. So will that help us with, with our other business staying on time? At a meeting or in terms of overall schedule? Both. Because we're going to get busier. There's no doubt. We've picked up, we're going to keep getting busier. Yeah, we already are. So well, let's figure out how we all. And I think that without having a review process ahead of time, it potentially makes things a little bit more difficult during the public hearing process because then we're trying to. 
you know, one thing I did not do in hindsight should have done is gone and taken a good look at our regulations. I haven't done that. Mm -hmm. Subdivision rules and regs. The A and R process is to file file at a regularly scheduled meeting. Same with preliminary plan and subdivision site plan review. We don't really have, except for some of the bylaws dealing with special permits for certain uses. We don't. That's one thing we do need to do is get some regulations for special permits in general. Because we don't. Process, which is right. necessarily the right process. It's just what we've been No, like I said, the whole idea forever. here is to make is, is to give you some breathing room, which by extension is going to help us out right. too. Right, right, yes. right. But whether it's reviewed before it gets submitted or reviewed after it's submitted, it's still going to have to happen and we'll have to you know, figure out a time right. Right? So, for that to happen. So for things that are incomplete. Site plan review specifically says it. If it's not complete, the town planner does a review. If it's not complete, it gets kicked back. Is that in the bylaw? That's in the regulations. Okay. Um, we don't really say that for other things, but it has been our practice. So I guess I'm kind of going back to if, if we were to say a draft application needs to be submitted to, assuming we keep the regulations as they are, if it needs to be, it needs to be submitted two weeks prior to the agenda date when they intend to file, and any final revisions need to be completed a week before or the Thursday before, so at least there's, although the applications you guys don't really need to see until after they're submitted and the public hearing getting ready. The public hearing date has been set. So I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. But it's, if it's something that you all need to take action on, I would say you know, at least the Thursday before so there's an opportunity for the weekend to review.
we take a look. I think I'd like to look at the regs. Okay. Yeah. That'd be the more carefully. Okay. More, more carefully. Is that redundancy? <laughs> well, I, I yeah. appreciate the, this being brought up yeah. in discussion. And yeah, and it's, it's really just, just that at this yep. point. You know, yep. Just a discussion, something to think about. I, I, more than happy to look at the regulations and maybe touch bases with you, Mark. That. Yeah. <coughs> see, see what you're comfortable with because that's really what this is all about. And, you know, I don't have any sense of urgency with this. I mean, okay. I don't have any deadlines to meet or anything like that. You know. No, but it would be helpful to get, and I think it goes back to the conversation that we had before about getting some rules and regs in place yeah. for the board. And maybe, maybe that's the answer rather than this approach but you know I mean, we are a small town so we don't necessarily need the same level of uh, regulation as say a Salem or a, a Peabody but to your point it's not going to slow up so it's going to be any yeah, it certainly busier, seems to be right yeah I mean I think we've got probably now five pending subdivision applications right that's just going to be a lot of work yeah But, you know, this, um, looking at Haverhill here, it says A&R &R, A plans um, should be submitted to the planning office 10 business days prior to the regular scheduled planning board meeting. And that, I think, would be reasonable. That gives yeah. a reasonable amount of time for review and corrections, revisions to be made. We can cut and paste, you know.
Yeah, that was sort of an objective. Uh, yeah, I got posted on Thursday. I did. I probably just missed it. I think we're still not, it's still not working. So, going forward, mm -hmm. what other homework do we need to do? Because I, I, I really like this format. I think it's a good opportunity to, to discuss things um, without having time crunch on us. You know, keeping it to an hour and a half, too, is, is ideal. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, uh, what comes next, I guess. Yeah. I prefer things to you know, select them tomorrow night. Yeah. So I like to think of strategic planning. What might be here in three months, six months, that sort of thing. So we have a feel of where we're going, what might be coming our way, what we have to So we have the wireless that we're going to be working on, so that'll, that'll probably be our three, six month project. I think so, yeah. Uh, unless something dramatic happens in the next couple of weeks. Right. Yeah. We have this regulation that we can look at over the next three. Right. Okay, so that brings us three, and we have a six month project. Is there anything that we should think of? I mean, when at the appropriate time, I don't think it's right now, but we need to think about the presentation for the dimensional, uh, you know, finalizing those, the dimensional regulations. Oh, I think. And we talked about uh, maybe doing um, uh, a couple public opportunities for discussions that we or with PowerPoint. We thought about that. Um, well, we'd be doing it for the public hearing, for mm -hmm. sure, and then refine that for town meeting. You know, I think for the public hearing, it, it might be um, helpful if we start off so much with not with what we're presenting, but what we're trying to prohibit. <laughs> In other words, uh, uh, the DePero plan, for example. Right. So this, the, this is what's coming down the road. These are the types of things that are being uh, proposed. and. Uh, you know, we, we, we're concerned about right. safety and access, right. and so therefore we want to put some minimum dimensional requirements. We, we've identified that in our existing bylaws, yeah. situations like this can occur. These situations you know, create X, Y, Z, public safety, yeah. and this would be our suggestion to address it after looking at what the options are and what other communities do. Yeah. I think it might it might put it in, in perspective, mm -hmm. and you're right, and to emphasize the fact that most communities have some form of this type of regulation. Yeah. And then we've researched other communities yeah. to, to, you know, to apply that we're doing due diligence to bring, back, to bring forth the best recommendation. You're right, because what happens is I think people see recommendations, and they see it as a self-centered, unidirectional agenda, and then they react to it. Right. As opposed to, okay, this is the problem. Yeah. We've, we've looked at it. These are the concerns. This is what the communities do. This is what we suggest we do as a community in our best interest. Yeah. It, it's that. all in the presentation. I agree. Because if you present the change, then it just falls with the question why as opposed to explain to them. We have this problem. This will fix it then you don't get all the whys. Right, yeah, no, I think it's important to set the stage for what the recommendations are. Mm -hmm. I do it in a timely manner when people are fatigued, because usually by the time we get to that sort of stuff, yeah, it's a tail end of a meeting. I, I think we just put up a, a screen that shows what a lot could look like, which still is going to have a lot of angles and <laughs> it might make a lot of people in the audience very uncomfortable like oh my gosh that's what they're going to be scratching their heads saying, <laughs> what do i do with my lot am i in trouble can i ever sell it again <laughs> yeah so we again it's all yeah. in the presentation yeah. but we got we got plenty of time to work on that yeah. so i think that's good so what other things do we need to you know think about uh you know, as we have five, we have five projects coming that are on the potential board. Potential, right. Yeah, plus the 40B that's been submitted, so mm -hmm. there will be some review of that by the board and 
comments going back. Do you, do you think it's appropriate for our board to request more resources to help with what's coming in? Um, because I mean, your desk was busy more than two, four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, you know, it, it, it's an individual can do so much stuff, and you know, we have we have some uh, administrative help. Do we need to think about enhancing that? Um, will we to a point? Is there a threshold that we say, okay, once we get beyond this, we, we have to look to the, the leadership of our town to say, we have to pay attention to this, and this is how we have to pay attention to it. Well, it's part of a discussion that I, I want to be having yep. with Tracy. Good. So. Good. Good. Um, I think then, as that discussion comes down the pike, let's all, you know, contribute so that there's an appreciation. Because, you know, again, you know, one of us is not able to do what they need to do, then we're sunk. More arms and more legs to get the job done. Yeah. Process, too. So other things that we might need to think about, um, should we be interfacing with any other public concerns? Yeah, you know, the projects that might be coming down the pike, I mean, you have to help me there. Our seawater is rising. Oh, it's <laughs> you know, do, do we need to, do we need to think about things like this? No. I mean, certainly there will be opportunity to, we've got the municipal vulnerability grant, there's going to have to be a multi-hazard mitigation plan update. We still need to finish the master, master plan. Master plan, I was just about to write that down. M started it. So let's talk about finishing the master plan. You need, uh, there are two components we have to work on, right? Uh, two major sections that need to be done, and then we're going to have to kind of go back and revisit language because it's, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. So, we have regulations we're going to work on. Um, let's let's uh, let's dust off the massive plan. Let's bring that forth for our next workshop to start looking at that, and dividing where it needs to be divided and conquer it. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, that probably makes sense. Because if we worked on that for three months, this is February. We could potentially have it sealed. So we have two three month projects, one six month project. Well, we also have a bunch of you know, other zoning amendments that have been kicking around for a while, like solar and okay. we do. things we do. like we do. that. So, so you know, we've had an ongoing list. Yep. So, how should we chew it on our list? Well, I think it's really a matter of prioritizing. Yep. So maybe what we should do is all think about it for next time yep. and then come to the table with some thoughts. So I might uh, ask that uh, whatever is on our list that that be circulated so that we can think about what's important and then we can when we meet next time we can say, yes, let's put on this one. Let's shelve that one. discuss that at the last meeting mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Susan was going to reach out to you about maybe a joint meeting. Okay. She hasn't yet, but yeah. 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 And everybody's busy. Well, yeah, I think, yeah. Especially this time of year. Yeah. With town meeting. Well, town meeting coming now that the 40B has been submitted. Yeah. You know, that's kind of a game changer for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, the, the They have a very legitimate concern, mm -hmm. and it, the, their concern is easy to understand. The fix is not so easy to get a, to wrap your head around. It, you know, I yeah. mean, they, they're increasingly seeing the, these, uh, you know, the roof decks and buildings going up and up and up on the island. You know, and they need. In fact, they were going to re, uh, refer one question to town council. They did this morning. Yeah, yeah. And she, I sat in on that, and we. We're up 
the same opinion, which is that it's not. Yeah. Well, that apparently has been the interpretation. The definition of the story, whether or not attic spaces is, can be defined as a story. There was an abutter to one of the projects who was there the other night who was insistent and found some language to support her position in the bylaw that, that even though an, an attic is still a story, you know, even though it's not living space. But that, I'm not saying it's conclusive language, but she found something to hang her head on. And um, that's historically, as I understand it, not been the way that the bylaw has been interpreted. Right, right, and in this case, it's it's not even it's not even something that qualifies under the building code as a room. It's just access to get out onto right. the roof deck. So it's like you know, almost a little doghouse, but they put a fancy roof on it, right. which made it look kind of like more than it was really. I think. Yeah. So, not that I would want to bring public safety, but you think about it. The lots are smaller. The houses are closer together. Mm -hmm. Something goes wrong. You bring two pieces of apparatus down there, or three pieces of apparatus. You bring a ladder truck which needs space, and it can't get yeah. to where it needs to get to. Mm -hmm. No, it's an absolutely problem down there. What is the uh, the height cutoff right now? It's thirty-five feet from mean green to the mean height of the highest roof. Right. And uh, the things that they're wrestling with is how do you how do you define mean height if you're putting on a roof deck or, or if it's a flat roof or dormer, you yeah, know, whatever. They, they just, and it seems to be the bulk of their business, quite frankly, a request for findings in Plum Island. Yeah, absolutely. People, people want to either expand the footprint or they want to go out, you know. Um, and uh, that's, like I said, almost, you know, they're going to get busy now with the 40B, but. Uh, I mean, that's every meeting I've gone to, there have been two or three requests for findings in Plum Island, and it's pretty much been it. There, did someone, speaking of getting things on the agenda at the last minute, some guys come in that you had apparently sent to them uh, regarding a, a subdivision in uh, uh, Hard Road um, that they, they might need a variance uh, oh. in order for uh, and um. Basically, the board discouraged them. Yeah, they had actually, it wasn't. They had asked me what I thought about it. It wasn't I, but but their council who had suggested that they pursue a variance. Oh, I asked them if they had to trade. They said no. Well, they not formally oh, yet. Okay. I don't think. Yeah, but anyway, the CBA kind of discouraged them that, that they had the grounds for variance. So I don't know if they're going to come back to visit you again. But, uh, he called me. Yeah. I forget what it is. I know it's a high road ad address. I don't recall what it is. Yeah, uh, right two, yeah. Um, so there were two issues. One is by changing changing lot lines, uh, one of the existing structures will lose its grandfather's status because it's too close to the side yard setback. And the other had to do with the, uh, I think, the radius. Yes, turning the radius. Turning radius. Yeah. They had the training radius. I think they could apply to us for, for, for a waiver. For a waiver, right. But the, Variance that would be for the side yard setback. The board just said, you know, informally, we don't see any grounds for it, you know, for granting the variance. But we'll see. Yeah, yes. That's on high road? It's on high road, yeah. Yeah. Is it in the 200s? 221. 221. So we might have a meeting sometime to talk around with the CDA. Right. Right. To, I think to talk about height and any, you know, any any other concerns that they have, things that they've seen that could be addressed in something to help clarify or whatever. Do we have any concerns with any other boards? No, I mean we had talked about and this was you know, something that's been on my list to review the table of use regulations and and um, that might get into a broader discussion outside the, the board and just looking at what's what's allowed what requires a special permit and a special permit granting authority is is there a few that I think probably at this point don't really make sense Does the planning board have sole authority over special permits? 
No. Uh, the planning board, I think at this point, has the bulk of them, but the ZBA is the special permit granting authority for a few things like bed and breakfast, currently wireless facilities, and uh, detached accessory structures. And the selectmen are the special permit granting authority for certain things. Um, like smaller parcels? No, it's actually things that might have a more global impact. Um, like uh, they're the special permit granting authority for things that require special permits in the water supply protection overlay district, for example, um, and for things like the driving range. Um, and, uh, I can't remember. Actually, there the, there's a special permit granting authority for bed and breakfast. I think the select not the CDA. So along the lines of that, um, not that I want to bring this up, <laughs> um, bed and breakfast, but uh, what about Airbnb? I was just going to ask. I'm sure that's going to be popping up. Yeah, and that's something that we haven't talked about regulating so far. Yeah. With the Airbnb, would we even know people had some signed up for Airbnb? It's supposed to be registered. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, or I think, at least in communities that have it, I don't know if it's a state requirement actually, but but I if think, you and I think Boston, Boston is basically. Boston is requiring it. Right. But it's being done at the community at the, at level, the local level. level. Yeah. Well, because anybody could say I live in a couple extra bedrooms, a couple bucks up for this, and no, maybe no one would be the wiser. Yeah. That's kind of how it started. They could get into a, a gray area. Well, probably at, at, at some point it, it's going to require some uh, legislative action to sort of standardize what can and cannot be done and what can and cannot be regulated. You know, so the same as like Uber and the That's right. You know, right. right. You, you can't really, it's very difficult to to um, regulate that at the local level. Right. Well, with that being said, we've got a lot to think about. We do have some things there. Yeah. We'll, we'll have a we'll wish list of what we want to try to achieve. People have ideas from the wish list. Let's you know, communicate those. And yeah, let's look at another date. meeting is uh, April 28th right. and our public hearing is scheduled for the 18th. Yeah, just ask. I thought something was going on in the 18th. Right, so we do, um, there are a couple of regulation changes actually, one that Larry had, had found um, and also one for site plan review that we'll need to schedule a public hearing for as well. But my feeling was that let's get town meeting that one put to bed and we can do the regulation changes. So 
suggestion or proposal for our next workshop. Not July 19th. <laughs> Are you not going to be here? No, oh, I'm just here. <laughs> so you, you mean you want to go till after town meeting? Or? No, not after town meeting. No. So you think no. the 9th, 9th or the 16th? The 16th is not good for me. I will. Uh, next month? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll be away from the 14th and return on the 18th. Just in time for the meeting. Okay. It might be the week of the 23rd. Yeah, a month from, basically a month from today. And our next meets the fourth, right? Yes. So we'll be meeting at, so here's a scheduling question as well. Um, we're meeting at 6.45 for Borrego, 7.15 for solar, I mean for golf. Um, I think we do have some appearances. So we would would you all like to meet at 6.30 or do the appearances after the public hearings? Okay, along those lines, just with that thought, I think have you, we have to really start thinking about just one, one chunk of the meeting, whatever it is, whether it's a public, you know, we have to really think about streamlining that to be fair. Right, I mean the Borrego one should be straightforward. Should, should be straightforward. Subdivision plans. One for 68 Green Street and one for 108 Green Street. So both submissions be 15 minutes from the next, right? Yeah, not even because right. they don't really get into much of anything. Yeah. Four minute presentation, five minutes of this question, the discussion, 12 minutes. Because it really shouldn't yeah. be much outside the public hearing. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm fine with 630.